Hey guys, it's me again, and I found another minute to record uh, by some miracle. Today we're looking at Jeff Costellucci's Headless Horseman. This is one that I keep saying I want to look at, I want to break down and analyze, because it's one of my favorite arrangements that he's done. So I don't want to hold you guys too long with an intro, I just want to get right into this one. I'm so excited, I love this one. <laughs> so, sorry to pause so soon, but I really want to get into the theory behind this arrangement, this composition, because it's really good in this one. Like I said, this is one of my favorite arrangements that he's done. I think it, 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 it's second place. Uh, you'll see what first is very soon, though. But when he has the chromatic descending xylophone, for some reason people associate chromaticism in music with being scary. I'm not really sure why that is. But they use that a lot. You'll find in horror movie soundtracks. So he starts at a place. I didn't start, I didn't find exactly where it is. But he starts at a point where he can go right down to the uh, the root. I think it's the root of the fifth. Let me go listen to it again. Okay, so it can resolve to the root. So he might he might and he might end the chromatic run on like a minor third or something. I'm not sure offhand. But whatever it is, it resolves to the root really nicely, so I appreciate that. And the whole time it's doing that chromatic thing, the bass part is doing the fifth of the of the of the minor scale. So both parts, both the moving chromatic part and the bass part, resolve to the root very nicely. So that's a good way to open the piece. <laughs> no. Well, I elucidate on what happens outside when it gets late. Along about a midnight, the ghosts and banshees get together for their nightly jamborees. There's ghosts with horns and saucer eyes, and some with fangs about this size. Some short and fat, some tall and thin, and some don't even bother to wear their skin. So, first of all, diction. This is something that everybody comments on when they react to this, but it's very important. When you have a song that has this much spoken content instead of, instead of sung content, you have to be very clear in how you're speaking. Every word, every syllable has to be clear. You, everybody has to be able to understand exactly what you're saying. Like, how many people off the top of their head know the definition of the word elucidate? I don't know. I had to look it up after I discovered the song. But you can clearly hear what he's saying there. Gather around why elucidate. Like, you can clearly hear the word each separate word, where each word begins and ends, because his diction is so clear. So even if you don't understand the meaning, you can understand the words he's saying, and I think that's really impressive. Also, I want to comment on this background track. The percussion parts in his arrangements are usually really simple, but that's also good because if it was super complicated, it would distract from the singing or the speaking in this case. Um, and I like how, I think it's every measure, or maybe every two measures, whenever we change chords, he, had, he hits the... Um, the ride symbol on the drum. So, uh, yeah, overall it's a cool arrangement. Also, the organ, I don't know why, but people also associate that with creepy music. I'm not sure why, but it just is. So I like that he's taking advantage of stuff like that. Well, I'm telling you, brother, it's a frightful sight to see what goes on in the night. When the ghosts have a midnight chamber. So we've talked about piecing a lot before, sorry to pause again, but he speaks through the whole ver first verse of this song, and then he chooses a really good moment, like we're, we're almost a minute into the piece, so we're nice and comfortable with the setting he's established, so when he switches to the singing part, which by the way, for some reason I'm obsessed with this melody, I really like this song, it's it's like it fits really nicely, It's, it's not it doesn't feel like we've rushed to get here, it doesn't feel like we got here too slow, it just fits really nicely in with the arrangement. Have a midnight jamboree. Well, they break it up with the fiendish glee. Spooks are bad, but the one that's cursed is the headless horseman. He's the worst when he goes a jogging across the land, a holding his noggin in his hand. The demons take one look and groan and hit the road for parts unknown. So you can analyze the rhyme scheme of the song. I don't feel like it because I don't feel like I have the time to, but um. A lot of the time when you have rhymes and songs, you got to be really careful with the diction. We're coming back to the diction again because it's especially really good here because all of the rhymes feel so perfect. 
Like, if you go back and just listen for how the rhymes, like, the end of each line flows into the next, it's, um, I think he executes the rhyme schemes really well. Goes a dragon across the land, a holding his noggin in his hand. The demons take one look and groan and hit the road for parts unknown. Also, it's impressive that he can just hit a C2 like that, like, throughout this entire melody. There's no red flag, it's that's burned. They don't like him and he's really burned. It's where the longest days that he Yeah, can. he'll show them that he can get ahead. I also like that where it switches to the major key for just that part of the melody. He'll show them he can get ahead. He can't go down to the, um, what is that, E flat? I don't know. But, uh, I don't know, I kind of like that. Also... Uh, I think this is the first time he used the three other Jeffs doing the head voice in the background. And you can see how clearly it's progressed since then. Like, you had, uh, we just reacted to Monster Mash a couple days ago. And one thing that I realized after I went and revisited the Monster Mash after my reaction was that it's such, such, such a clear improvement in his video production quality from this point to Monster Mash. So this has its own archaic flair, I guess. I still like this one a little bit better just because it's more my style. Um, but yeah, it's very clear that like since since the time this video was released, he's improved with video production quality. But I went off track. Head voice sounds really good here. So keep that in mind. They were all in unison there on the root, which is an F here. Um, they were, they're all in unison for the headless horse needs a head part. Keep that in mind. Close all the windows, lock the doors. Unless you're careful, he'll get yours. I don't think he'll hesitate a bit, cause he'll tip your top if it'll fit. And he likes some little, like some big. Part in the middle, Black or white or even red, the headless horseman needs a head. The headless horseman needs a head. So Jeff likes to do that a lot, where at the end of the line or something, or maybe even in the middle of the line where it fits, we'll cut out the instruments just so we can, like, um, drop the last line or the last even half of a line of a melody. And it's not particularly, it's not the most interesting thing you have seen. It's, that probably sounds meaner than I intended it. But it's a very good technique for keeping your arrangement fresh and interesting all the way throughout. Also, I missed that. Hear how that time they broke, they started in unison, and then they broke into the three-part harmony for the Headless Horseman Needs a Head there. This, horseman needs a head. this, horseman needs a head. this is what we're talking about with the progression of the piece pacing, letting it gradually build to the end. It's after midnight, so listen good. Better stay at home like you should. Cause right outside and waiting there. So when you listen to songs in minor keys like this, um, it's always interesting to hear when they adopt a major key for like a few measures or something, like these head voices are doing here. I don't know why, it always just like adds so much to the texture of the piece, like it makes it feel less boring, it's so much more interesting. And I know Jeff took a lot of artistic liberties when he was arranging this because the original Headless Horseman song from the Disney movie The Adventures of Mr. Ichabod and Toad is not the most interesting song. I mean, it's a cool concept, but like, Musically, it's not fantastic. So this is definitely the better arrangement, and he took more, like, he put a lot of thought into arranging this. So I appreciate that he did stuff like that, like changing it to a major key for just a few measures to make it feel more fresh and interesting. So let's go back a few seconds and listen to A flat. That's Nightmare Fuel. You cannot reason with a headless <laughs> And if you get a chance, always watch the three Jeff heads because they're always being very weird and I guess comical. Um, so that's the Headless Horseman. I wanted to comment on the end right there, how he seems to do that a lot in his arrangements. He did that in 16 Tons too, which, by the way, is the next Jeff Costalucci arrangement we're reacting to. Um, yeah, where at the end, he'll cut out all the instrumentation and stuff, 
and we'll have the soloist do, I guess the soloist Jeff, just do riffs up into the high range and go all the way down for the very end and then have the uh, instrumentation come back in for maybe just like a measure to finish out the piece. So we can go back and listen to that again, also just because I like the end of this one. You cannot reason. See the instrumentation cuts out. With a So, like I said, when it comes to this versus his Halloween special this year, which is Monster Mash that we just reacted to, um, this is probably the one I prefer just because it's more my style. However, it's also interesting to see how much his the quality of his video production and even his arrangements have improved over the past year. Um, and there's a good not noticeable upward trend in the quality of his video production. And I know a lot of that is thanks to Kathy and the studio that he records with. So kudos to them. Uh, go subscribe to Jeff. Uh, if you didn't upload these covers, we wouldn't be reacting to them. Uh, thank you for coming back, and be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.